first interviewed you uh, back in 2007, you were reluctant to talk about matters of faith then. Has anything changed? For whatever reason, I've decided to acknowledge it again. I have never not thought that I was a prophet. And uh, I'm now fully convinced I'll never be able to do what I think God's mission for me on earth is until I not only admit that, but honor it and do what I think is required. I am planning an effort that is, in my perspective, bigger than Ole Miss, the Meredith Walk or Malach. Uh, for next summer, I mean, uh, I intend to uh, walk from Tennessee to Louisiana, 325 miles, and speak at 140 towns and cities, which is about 75 or 80 percent of all the population in Mississippi and uh, and deliver what to me is the equivalent of what Moses did the last year of the 40 years in the in the wilderness uh, uh, interpreting for the people what they had to do uh, to make their life and, and their children's life uh, what uh, God intended. Now, that's very interesting because I, I wondered if you had had, even though maybe you hadn't gotten serious about your commitment with God, as you've put it several times, I wonder if you haven't had a sense of God's leadership in your life. That you well, the truth of the matter is, it ain't never not been, you understand. But like a lot of humans, if not all humans, uh, I decided it was more pleasing to man to accept all of the credit myself, <laughs> including God's and everybody else's. <laughs> I mean, so, uh, uh, but there's never been a day in my life that whatever people congratulated me for, it didn't run through my mind <laughs> that it wasn't me, it was God. <laughs> but it was so ego-satisfying <laughs> to, <laughs> to uh, accept that uh, godly role <laughs> for your human self <laughs> that I continue to do it. What has helped you today to get the right perspective about who you are? Well, uh, <laughs> as smart as I am, <laughs> some things just couldn't come together as they have <laughs> uh, <laughs> without an unseen hand. And this thing about serving God and man. You understand for most of my life, man was you and him and the rest of you all. When it came to me, I wasn't man. As a matter of fact, I thought God and I were partners and I was the senior partner. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> now, nah. and ego has been absolutely the most difficult thing for me to deal with and to get around and to prevent uh, failure. <laughs> uh, you know, so uh, I, the more I learn, the more I think the problems 
that most human beings suffer are the same problems that most other human beings suffer. How would you like to be remembered? Actually, I wouldn't want to be. Only, uh, uh, my only real mission now is to find out what God wants and then do it. I think in many ways I found out what he wants because I haven't found the capacity to do it. And lastly, this is, uh, I've had the privilege of uh, talking with you over a number of years and, and filming you, and I want to make sure that I give you the opportunity to say anything that you want to that I haven't asked or addressed. Please feel free. During my man life, I spent nine years in the military. And I might not have learned much, but one thing I learned there, you never volunteer for nothing. So you ain't hardly going to get an answer to that. J.H., it's been my privilege. Thank you so much. Thank you.